Hey, what's up? This is your boy Norris. Welcome back to another Sword Academy course review. Now, in May's course, um, I did the four top uh, men's welt pockets that are used in garments. Now, um, this is more of a technique and technical um, course. Some courses we do full-on garments. Sometimes we do um, full-on techniques. And this previous course was one of those uh, courses where we heavily um, involve ourselves with technique. And also, on top of that, um, I discovered, well, I won't say I discovered, but um, I saw that there was an easier way to do a welt pocket. Um, and I'm going to kind of explain it right now. So one of the, fir the first one that we did was just a basic back, a single welt pocket. You know, it's a welt pocket right here. It's just one welt, it's a single welt, and it's a back pocket. And inside the course, I have the pattern pieces to actually put this uh, welt on, this welt pocket on any uh, pair of pants. Uh, you can put it on both sides, you can just put it on one side. So I just basically took a piece of scrap fabric, just not even a pattern piece, I did the shape of a back piece. And as you can see, you get really close to those details, and then you'll see the inside, and then this is the other side. And I've also made sure that if you look right here, that's interfacing. So we always want to put interfacing on the back or whatever piece we're going to slash into because it gets scary work with welt pockets. So that's why I wanted to teach this class. Um, next, we have a double welt pocket, but with a flap. Now, this pocket right here is mostly used in a men's um, suit jacket, a blazer. And the cool thing about this pattern, you can tuck in the flap, as you can see right here. It's just a double welt. And look how perfect it is on the sides, in the corners, top and bottom. And then you can get a more casual look by pulling the flap out like that. You open it up, you can put your hand in your pocket, just like that. So a cool thing about this particular um, pocket right here is that it has two different versions, as you just saw. You can tuck it in and get a more clean, simplistic look, or you can take it, take it out and get a more casual look. However you want to rock it is up to you. Um, if you look at the back, you have the full-on piece. You have interfacing on the back, and this is just regular muslin. Now, you can just take a regular muslin, and you can follow through with the course, and you'll basically see that um, you can put it on any garment. Now, um, will it... Will it look good on any garment? I'm not sure, but you have, you have the tools and you have all the, um, the pattern pieces to put it on any garment you want. So basically, that's the way it looks like. Okay. Now, number three, we have, this is kind of, I mean, it's like a welt, it's a welt pocket, but it's also considered like a pocket band. So have you ever seen like a trench coat with a welt pocket on the side that's slanted and you know, so you're able to put your hands in your pocket without it being a side seam pocket. This is this pocket right here. So let me show you. So I cut out a piece like if it was a side, and here it is. You just basically, you want to take your hand, boom, there it is. Um, as you can see what's different, this, this welt right here is sewn and then flipped up. It's not slashed and spread all the way on the whole length. The slash and spread is basically right here. Let me show you. Basically down here, and we flip up, and we top stitch the sides right here. Now the top stitch on this one is not perfect. I just did a different color just so you can see it. And it's one of those welt pocket, pocket bands that is very useful, and you can add it on almost any jacket, pretty much. Um, it has a really nice clean look. And if you look at the bottom, I mean if you look at the back, that's how the pocket bag looks. And just, just so, you, so you can see some detail, um, we put interfacing obviously on the back piece of the pattern, on the back piece of this right here before we actually cut into it. So anytime you want to add a welt pocket, wherever that placement is on your garment, you wanna put a strip of, of interfacing because it just helps stabilize the fabric when you start cutting and slashing into it. All right, so let me just give you a little let you see that it's not, you know what I'm saying, too crazy. Stitching is not perfect right here, but it was just for purposes for you to see how to do it. And basically this right here is just some muslin fabric and please practice. If you practice all of these welt pockets, 
once you get ready to get do your garment, you have more confidence and you'll be able to do it with no problem at all. Now, the last one is a breast pocket uh, welt. Now, put in a piece of muslin to, to show that that's where a pocket square should go. So you can see like basically what it is. And it basically goes like this. So before I continue, the one thing that I do want to make sure that you never want to put your breast pocket on your right side. It always goes on your left. Always, 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 always goes on your left. So please don't let me catch you being goofy and having this breast pocket on your right side because it don't go on your right side, it goes on your left side. Now, that's, that's, that's first step. Second, as always, you wanna make sure you put that interfacing on the back of your pattern piece so when you get ready to slash and spread and cut and all that good stuff, um, you have your um, fabric stabilized. This pocket right here is basically similar to the last one I just showed you right here but it's much smaller and the shape is just a little different. Now that's, that band that I just showed you is a pretty, pretty um, um, even rectangle. Um, this, the pattern piece on here is, has like a little weird shape and it's kind of slanted onto your piece. Um, also, you have two options on this one. Well, you have the option on the other one, but it's mostly used for this one. Um, the first option is to, you can top stitch once you flip up, you can top stitch the size down or you can hand stitch it so you can get a clean look. I went ahead and hand stitched mine so it looks a little bit more cleaner. And this is how you get the welt pocket on your breast pocket done. And this is the back. And all of these pattern pieces are included so you can put it and add it on any jacket that you want to. There's always a, a different technique of doing certain things and from my experience because once I started sewing, uh, welt pockets and I guess working with plaid fabric was one of the most challenging things that I did when I first started. The men's garments that I enjoy wearing a lot has a lot of those details. Um, I love plaid, so I was gonna work with plaid a lot, so I had to learn how to do it early. And when it comes to my men's wear garments that I love the most, there's a lot of welt pockets. When I first started, um, it, it teaches you how to base um, your, your welt down, and base your lining down, and then you slash and spread, and you flip, and then you just continue the process. But what I found that was easier, and you'll see it once you sign up to Sword Academy and you look at this particular course, instead of basing every piece down onto your, onto your garment, one layer after one layer after one layer, it increases your chances for your lines to be off just a little bit because it's kind of hard to base one and then put something on top and get it exact and base another one and then get another layer and a basic, you know what I'm saying, to get an exact point. So what I've learned is to um, base all my stuff before I put it onto my actual garment. So for instance, I have my welt and I have my lining. Your welt goes underneath the lining because once you turn everything um, to the inside, you'll see the welt first. So I would base my lining and my welt together and then the very last thing I do, I do one basting onto my actual garment. And it's easier because you already have a basting stitch so you can do a perfect line. And also when you cut into your corners, that little triangle you get, for those that uh, don't know what I'm talking about, sign up to Sword Academy, start from the beginning and um, you, you will understand everything that I'm saying. But once you cut and create that triangle, a lot of people like to go exactly where their markings are. And a lot of the times with the welt, with the interfacing, sometimes your pattern piece don't stretch as much and reach exactly where that dot is or where your markings are. So when you cut into your corners, you wanna make sure that you go to where your stitching stop instead of where your marking is, okay? So those were like some major tip that, that we went over in this previous Sword Academy course, okay? So uh, once again, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and also subscribe. Um, also, if you're new or if you're intermediate or even if you're in advance, um, you can always sign up to Sword Academy and get a lot out of what you pay for. It's $11.97 a month, cheaper than two Starbucks drinks, and you get on there, we have over 50-something courses on just the menswear and then just as many in the women's wear. You can sign up, you can take both women's wear and men's wear, and it's not just sewing. It's sewing, we have some design, we have some pattern making, we have a lot of techniques. We even have a whole techniques column where you can just look at techniques. It's like 
a minute video, two minute video on just how to do a certain thing if you forget a technique instead of looking at a whole video. All right, so once again, appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.